In this Interactive Brokers for Beginners tutorial, I'll show you how to use the mobile app to research, purchase and sell assets on Interactive Brokers. And I'll also cover a few essential sections that you will need on your investing journey. <laughs> Hello finance people, my name is Robert and I'm here to share my learnings and experiences about personal finance as a European. So once you installed Interactive Brokers app and gone through the sign up process with all the documents and so on, you'll land on this page. If you haven't signed up yet, go to this link or click on the first link in the description and sign up there. And that, at the same time, you'll be supporting my channel. So I appreciate it if you do that. So once you sign up to Interactive Brokers, you land on this page. This is basically your dashboard. I like to spend some time here just to check how my portfolio is doing. Right now, I only have one position there, but in any case, you probably want to deposit some money so you can start trading. And you can do that by tapping on the more at the bottom. Then if you scroll down a little bit, you have here transfer and pay. If you tap that, you see it opens up and here you have the option to deposit funds. So let's tap on that. So how you deposit funds in Interactive Brokers is a bit strange, I would say, but in any case, I already have here, I've already deposited one. So I'm gonna just show you how to create a new deposit method. So let's tap on it. And then depending where you are, so if you're in Europe, probably you can just bank transfer, but if you're somewhere else, this might be slightly different, but just follow the instructions here. So in my case, I have two options. I can bank transfer the money or I can do with wise balance. So basically transfer wise, that's how it used to be called. You can also send money to this one. I'm gonna use the bank transfer and here just tap on get instructions. And from here, basically you scroll down First of all here, we want to save the bank information for later. Then you need to type in your institution. In my case, it's ING bank something something. Just check what your institution's name. Usually it's just the bank name in your country. So check that. And then you need to type in your bank account. So I'm just gonna type something here. It's not the real one, but you type in your bank account. And why do they require this? It's just so that you kind of register that you're sending this money and then they know to accept it. And you also get the reference number here. So let's say I want to deposit 2000 euros here. And they even ask here, you can do recurring transactions, but I'm going to talk about that a bit later. And then let's tap on get transfer instructions. And now you can see that you have um, the beneficiary account title. In most countries, you don't need this. What you need is this international bank account number, IBAN, and this is the number you need to send the money to. So you probably need to the IBAN plus the Interactive Brokers Ireland Limited, the name of the beneficiary. Then you have the SWIFT code or BIC code, depending on your country. I didn't need it, but maybe you, you do. Then you have the bene beneficiary bank. Again, in most cases you don't need it, but this is important. There's even a little exclamation mark here. You need to include your account number in the reference. Otherwise they won't know how to connect your deposit to your account. So it's really important you do this. Now, once you're ready here at the bottom, you just tap on finish. So just do this in your online banking. And in my case, it took maybe 30 minutes and then it already showed up in my interactive brokers account. So it was pretty quick, but I'm in the Netherlands. It might be slightly different for, for in your case. So since we are here in transfer funds uh, section, I just want to mention that you can also do your withdrawal here and also transfer funds between accounts. So you can transfer accounts between basically different interactive brokers accounts. Okay, so you just received the money and you're ready to invest. What do you do? Well, before you go anywhere, we need to do one setting so that it's a little bit cheaper for us to actually invest. So to do that, we need to go into uh, tap more and then here scroll down until you see settings and then account settings. Here, just tap on all account settings. This will take you actually to a browser and now you are in the web portal kind of. So here, just scroll down until you see this pricing plan. Let's tap on it. Now here, in most cases, if you're trading with less than 5,000 euros at a time, then it's better to choose the tiered one. And I'm not gonna go into specifics. There's a great video by Angelo Colombo. Uh, I'll link it in the description if you wanna see why there's a difference. You get a bit of less fees in this case. So let's tap on continue and then just okay. And since we are now in the account management, I just wanna show you here, if you scroll down again, and I want to just mention here, you have the base currency. This is important. If you want to trade in other currencies than euros, then this is where you would change it and you can change it on the fly. So it's, so, you know, this is where you do it. So let's tap on done. 
and let's go back to the app basically and now we are ready to uh, I just tapped on the home icon at the bottom and now you have the search icon here at the top if you tap on it we can start searching for stocks let's say we're interested in Tesla I search for Tesla and I now tap on search and you can see whoa that's that's a lot of options actually here's the deal the first one is Tesla stock on Nasdaq that's in, in New York now the rest here they are leverage positions what does leverage mean you basically borrow money to have a bigger money pot so instead of a thousand euros that you invested you're actually investing in this case three times which is three thousand uh, euros so you bro borrow the two thousand and one thousand is yours that's great when the stock is going up and basically you're getting three times the profit but here's the risk if the stock goes down you also lose three times more money so this is really I would start with the non leverage positions because it's less risky it's nicer to test out without having that kind of a um, risk involved so I'll definitely not uh, consider these when you're starting out but then if we keep scrolling there's other Tesla stocks here so these are a bit confusing so for example here second to last we have Tesla Inc Ibis what is that that's actually the same Tesla stock but in euros on German exchange and then I think the last one is in Mexican exchange as well so let's tap on the uh, second to last the one in Germany because we're in Europe we want to actually trade in euros so here you get the option of stocks or CFDs we're interested in stocks so let's tap on that and here you can see that there's a little flag here uh, on the left side with German flag that means it's the exchange is in Germany and it's open for next hour and a half or so now why is this important this just determines which uh, currency the exchange is using so obviously German exchange will use euros and uh, American will use USD and this has an impact how we invest because in uh, interactive brokers you cannot just uh, buy a stock with your euros if the stock is sold in USDs you need to convert your euros to dollars that's why it's easier to start with euro stocks or stocks that are sold in euros also you have a bit less fees in that case so on this page this is basically the Tesla stock asset page or whatever you want to call it and what you can do here obviously you see the price then you have here some information how it's been today uh, it's been fluctuating between 225 and 235 and then there's more information you have the graph for the last month and then you can also tap on the book and the company information let's see company information here you can see the total revenue and so on it's just like a summary of their financials and then you have the news specifically about Tesla so you can see there's quite a lot of it so if you are researching something you could do it all from your app now let's go back to quote and if we just uh, scroll down you can see there's more information you have also information about dividends but Tesla doesn't give out dividends so it doesn't show anything and then you have some analyst ratings and so on you can just uh, get to know to this if you're interested but let's scroll up here at the top you can also tap on the three dots in the right corner and you can see there's more information here and these are more of a settings and the cool thing here is they create a recurring investments so that's a, a nice feature that the uh, interactive brokers uh, provide now this is quite new let's close this one a few more things here at the bottom you have the eye icon this is basically your watch list you can add this uh, stock to watch list so let's do that I'm going to tap on favorites and add it and now it's added to that one and we can take a look at it a bit later but you also have this little alarm clock here if you tap on it this is basically price alert so if you're waiting for this stock to drop you could uh, set yourself a price alert and then when it happens you can actually do something about it now I don't need that let's close this one yes cancel do you find this video helpful so far then give it a thumbs up so I know you like this type of videos and then we have the sell and buy and this is obviously the meat of this whole page so let's discover how to buy a stock so we tap on buy and from here you see from the top you have the price you have the ask and the bidding prices but in any case here we can start by quantity so 100 would be 23k that's a bit too much for me but we can adjust this to for example 10 in that case it's 2300 if you just have the money and you don't want to calculate what you can do is tap on this little arrow next to the quantity or on the same row and it's here at the bottom we have shares and euros you can tap on the euros and from here you can either select the, the amount you want for example 1000 or you could just 
type it in yourself, let's say a 1200 like this. And you see lower that there's 5.13 shares, and that just means that interactive brokers are able to sell uh, fractional shares. And uh, fractional just means that instead of selling you one share at a time, so one, two, three, they basically can sell shares with decimals. I'm gonna just select from here back to shares because I usually like to buy in full shares and let's say I'm gonna select 10 here. Then the order type, this is important, and there's quite a lot of options, but there's uh, two main ones. I'm gonna start with the easiest one, which is market. Basically market means that if you now execute this order, it'll just go by the price that is current on the market. So it doesn't uh, take into account anything. It just looks at what's at currently at the market. So right now it's 233 and 15. It would buy it around that price. It's not always exactly what you see here on the screen, but around that. The other type that is popular is limit order. And this is a bit more traditional where you say, okay, the stock is right now 233. I'm going to wait until it's 232 and then it's gonna uh, execute the order. It doesn't mean it will actually buy for 232. It depends a bit of ex uh, how the stock fluctuates, but at that point when it drops to 232, it will execute the, the order uh, as market order. So it depends what will be at that point. So if it's free falling, it might be less, but if it just bounces up uh, quickly, it might be a bit more. So then you have the timing force, and this is quite simple. You have three options. You have day, and this executes the order today, and so if, for example, it doesn't reach that 232 today, then this order will be just canceled. Good till canceled is what it sounds like. Basically, if you don't do anything, it will be there until it's canceled. Um, so this is good to set if you have a lower price. But remember, if you set the limit price too low, it might never execute it. So you need to just uh, keep an eye on this. And then you have at the opening. And that means if you set certain price, uh, it will just wait for tomorrow or the next trading day. And then at the moment when the market opens, it will look if it's able to buy it for this price. If not, then it will cancel the order. Usually you would use day or good till cancel to, to trade. And then what we have here is you don't need the rest of settings like display size. Um, later on, when you feel a bit more comfortable with all the trading, you can also come here and attach order. You have something like stop loss and profit taker. Especially stop loss, you might use it in the future. Basically, stop loss is like a risk mitigation tool and you're able to set a limit. If the stock drops below that limit, then it automatically sells the stock. Um, but again, you need to get to know what this means and how it works before you actually use it, but uh, it's there. If we scroll down, there's some more information, but in any case, if we want to buy this, we would not slide to buy. You can see there's an arrow, so we would slide. Or before you do that, I actually like to preview the orders because the preview shows you also the how much fees you will pay. Now it's gonna give me warnings because I don't have enough uh, money right now, but let's see what it would say here. You can see there's commissions. Right now it doesn't show anything. You, usually you would see the fee here. So then you would see, okay, you have, you're buying this amount, then you have the fee, the total amount you're actually buying is this much and so on. So this is the preview and when you're ready, here at the bottom, again, slide to buy. And once you slide it, you can purchase that stock. Also, you see here that create a recurring investment. They're really advertising this feature because it's quite new to European market. Um, that's why you might want to set it up. If you're interested in doing something like this, then check out this video. I'll show you how to do it in Interactive Brokers. It takes a few steps, but it's probably the best strategy long-term to actually have every month investing X amount and it will do automatically. Otherwise, you'll just try to time the market and that doesn't usually end up so well. So in any case, um, let's go out of here. I'm not gonna do this order because I actually just don't have the money to do it. So at some point you, you've, you know, you've traded and then you want to sell your uh, stock or ETF, whatever you bought. It's quite easy to do. Just tap on portfolio and then you can see that here I have my uh, IWRD. So if I tap on that, that's an ETF. If I tap on the name, you can see that it takes me to that asset. Now in here, at the bottom, just be below the sell and buy button, you can see I have position 52. That means I have 52 shares of this ETF. And then you have here some information like unrealized profit, which is right now 95 euros. So if I would like to sell this, all I have to do is on this page, just tap on sell. And now I can do similar order like we did before. So let's do that. So I know that my quantity is 52. So I can just type it in here. Let's say I'm gonna do market order and it's also a day order. So here 
Now, if I tap on preview, you can see that there's the amount and also you have the commissions. So it's about three to 3.75 euros. So it's an estimate. So total, this is how much money would land on my account. Now, I'm not gonna do this because I wanna keep this ETF, but so that you know this way, if I would now slide to sell, it would sell my stock at the market uh, value. So let's go back. So let's take a look at the portfolio section. So here at the bottom, you can top on portfolio, but I'm already here. So this is what you would see. I only have one uh, stock right now or ETF. So that's why it's not very exciting. But basically here you would see your all your assets plus your cash reserves. So you, here below where you can see cash balances, Euro cash, 12 euros. So it's not, not a lot, but I've put it all into ETFs. From here, I just like to look how I'm doing. What's in a nice number here at the top right, you have this unrealized in 96. This one just means how much profit your stock has made so far. But basically this tells you overall how much is it in the green or in the red. But then if we continue, if we tap at the bottom these two uh, arrows, this is basically where you can trade. I'm not sure what's the point of it. I don't really use it because I usually just do it by searching and things like that. Um, but there's the option here. Then you have the watch list. I kind of quickly showed you before that you can add stocks here. And you can see here TL0 is there. Um, that's the stock, uh, the Tesla stock we were looking at. It's there. So, but if I want to remove this, I can tap on the to stock, tap again. And from here, I just tap on the eye icon at the bottom. And if I tap on this little X next to favorites, I can remove it from the list. So let's tap on remove and now it's removed. So if I go back, this is now my watch list. So you can add things here. You can create new lists here at the top. You have a new list option. So if you are following certain stocks, but you don't want to buy them, you would just add them here. And then you have at the bottom more. And this is basically where you have your account settings and things like that. But what I want to show you here, a few things. Let's scroll down and tap on settings here. If you tap on display, you can see you can set this to dark mode. I know a lot of you like this dark mode and you can set it from here if you want to. It's a bit more hidden than on the web portal, but basically this is the way you would do it. I'm going to keep it to the normal light one because I somehow don't like the dark one. So if we go back, there's other things that you should know about this section. The security definitely set up a two-factor authentication uh, just so that your money is safe and that your account is safe. The other settings, I don't think you're going to need them anytime soon. So let's go back to more. So I tapped on the more there at the bottom. And here, if at some point you want to do some reports, you want to know how much fees you have and things like that, you just uh, scroll here down and here you have transfer and pay. You can tap on trade reports. If you tap on that, It'll take you again to the, your browser and then open up the interactive brokers dashboard. And from here, you can now generate a report. What is the trade confirmation? No, I'm going to close this. And from here, you actually have more options. So for example, you can create your custom statement if you want to just uh, tap on this plus icon here, or you can also just tap on activity. The, if you tap on this one here, then you can set period. So let's say year to date. I'm just going to view because there's no other options that we can set here. And now you can see there's a lot of things to go through here. Cash report, that's where you, we have this commissions. You see base currency summary and you can see that there's the commissions. You can see them there. And then you have the trades, for example. And here you can see I've traded one ATF and there's also the commissions here. It just uh, kind of details out all, all your uh, activities on your account. So this is a good place to just double check what they're charging and things like that. The first rule of investing according to Warren Buffett is to avoid losses. That's why you should watch this video next where I'll share the best long-term investment strategies for individual investors like us so that you can mitigate the risk.